Okay, hello. Abdu? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that we can start right now because because there is a maybe no one gonna be here for today. So okay, let's time start. Okay, so hello everyone. So welcome to the new books club study club. Like uh, this is the book club for the Python for the data analysis, which is the third edition, which is the published in 2022, I guess. So yeah, I personally have a kind of a kind of a I would say newbie or I'm not familiar with the Python. I usually prefer to use R when I try to do the some of the data analysis. But the thing is, one of the main reasons why I make a decision to uh create a, this uh Python data analysis book club is Python is another uh good good programming languages that support that allows us to the conduct the uh, data analysis, especially for the machine learning or some of the uh, data science techniques in more easily and effective ways. So I just, I also want to uh, look forward to learning this kind of uh, uh, tool and then I'll get familiar with uh, these uh, Python languages, even if I already took the several, maybe I would say online courses so far, but, but still uh, there is a still kind of a steep learning curve to get used to the programming uh, programming data analysis coding in Python. So I think that it might be much better if we can study together for this book, especially for the, this book is a very, very good, I would say about the one of the textbook, we can say about the, when it comes to the data analysis using a Python. So. I think that learning this third edition gonna be the good opportunity for us to how, how Python works and then how, what we should do to make a code, a Python code for the data analysis. So as you can see here, this is the third edition. So I think that you already go to the go to the author's website and then the author's website actually provide all of the contents of the that book. Maybe you, you can feel free to uh, buy a physical copy of this book if you can want to support the, his outstanding work. Yeah, I'm personally thinking about, seriously thinking about the buy this one, this book as a physical copy so that I can always, always keep, keep it for my reference books. So, but anyway, so this is the third edition. And then uh, according to the authors, they, uh, uh, authors keep updating the his third edition book and then uh, just correcting the some errors or some mistakes. So I think that maybe learning to the learning this book through the online gonna be help us to uh correctly uh coding and then uh, correctly conducting the data analysis as an example in the book. So so this is the preface and then <clears throat> and then this is the kind of uh, just kind of how how book is the uh, structures and then uh, some of the conventions to use the this book like uh, italic gonna be the new term and then uh, some of the some of the fonts gonna be the differentiated from the other font about uh, what kind of things do we have and then uh, and then also you can feel free to feel free to go to the uh, his his github website to get the more recent version of the code or some examples, or maybe it says about the, there's also a GT website about the, the uh, some of the example or R coding things. So, and then uh, I think that that's the brief introduction of the preface. And then preliminary is because uh, uh, generally this book is actually about the nuts and bolts of the manipulating, processing, and crunching the data in Python. And then uh, it, it is actually uh, guide us to the part of the Python programming languages for the data analyst analytic purposes. And then uh, how, what kind of uh, Python, Python packages we have to use for the data analysis. And then 
what kind of the data set we have to look at. So most the common common type of the data set is the tabular, like a specific like a data set, which is the column like a, with the attribute like a string, numeric and date, etc. And then there's also another thing called the or uh arrays like a matrices, which is the this is the one table like a row and columns and then uh, these are the keep stacking uh together and then as a as a this one actually have a kind of a array for the for the data set okay and then multi table of the data set uh i think that this one is what this one is about actually multi table data set is a more like a here is a table, different table. And then there is a set of the column, like a ID. If there is the same ID, we can, they have in the both tables. Maybe we can thinking about the joining these two table and then use it as a one table, like a, like a left join, right? And right join and inner join. Auto join, etc. So these are the kind of a uh, data set we can actually see about the uh, if there is a common column that we can use to the join the this this table together. Maybe we can combine all of the, those table and then uh, use it as a one big table for our analysis. And then uh, the other one is the uh, evenly and unevenly spaced time series. So. There is a lot of a different kind of a data analytic approaches when it comes to the, maybe there is a T1, T2, and then a, each interval is the same. In that case, it's an evenly spaced, unevenly spaced time series is a interval is the different between the two time period. So those kind of things is a kind of a basic example of the data set. And then a, there is also more other type of the data set we can use maybe some of the listening, maybe in the data sciences, we also have uh, maybe text and image and sound and video. These are the kind of example of what is called the unstructured data. So there is also a lot of things we can do to the using the these kind of text and image and sound and videos as an unstructured data set. And then most of the maybe machine learning and deep learning approaches actually deal with the uh, can can handle this kind of a data set and then analyzing the analyzing the result to to get uh to have a good insight from the uh, uh from the those analysis. Okay, so is there any questions so far? Anything? Well, I, I think it's fine. Okay. Oh, no. No. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So why Python for the data analysis? I think that yeah, Python and R is a kind of a, what is called a scripting kind of languages. And then it is a Python is a very strong power about the about the processing and then a multi-threading kind of a calcul processing techniques. And then this one is also a very good advantage of the uh integrating the C C and C plus plus and Fortran code. Uh I personally I'm not kind of a computer science guy. I just kind of uh, apply to social science tech on uh, background. So I didn't have much chance to the using the C and C plus plus but Maybe for for the computer scientists or some of the machine learning data analysts, they sometimes use the C and C plus plus and even Fortran code to inter to integrate it with the Python languages, and then that's gonna be allows us to the more uh faster data processing and then a more more faster analyze uh, get uh, obtaining the faster analytic result to interpret them and then and then also the other thing is the solving the two language problems so 
like uh, testing the ideas and then some of the uh like uh 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 what I can how I can say is uh yeah I'm not sure about the, what the two language problem is but the thing is it's just it just kind of allows us to the like I said like uh, for the data analytic purposes it is actually kind of uh, compiled to the other uh, uh languages and then uh uh those kind of uh, integration advantage of the integration of the of the languages with the other languages is gonna be the big uh, advantage. And then uh, why not in the Python is a uh, kind of code. Yeah, yeah, yeah well I, I, yeah, yeah I think also uh, solving the two problems it's like uh, uh, I think that there is uh, signaling the, the versatility of Python that it, it could be used for many purposes you know it could be used uh, for data analytics and it could also be used for building uh, like uh, you know mm -hmm. web development and stuff like this as mm -hmm. as opposed to R which is mainly for you know for maybe statistical mm -hmm. analysis and hardly people use it for building stuff like web applications and stuff like this I think uh, okay okay so and then he also mentioned about the why not Python but it also it is actually says about the some of the challenging languages for the building high concurrent or multi-thread applications in here. But as far as I know is the compared to the R, R actually do based on the single thread kind of uh, applications and then a data pre processing structure. In maybe Microsoft R can be do the some of the multi-thread in parallel computing for the data analysis, but are usually basically about the single threading uh, data processing uh, structure. But on the other hand, Python is actually kind of a multi-threading kind of approaches. So that actually kind of allows us to the much faster analytic result compared to the uh, when we use the R to get the result. That's the what I understand about these things. But But anyway, so... And then the uh, 1.3 is the actually mentioned about the essential Python library we have to use in this book. So first thing it actually says about the NumPy, like a numeric Python. So this one is uh, one of the basic uh, numerical computing and data analytic and then a data processing pi uh, packages that allowed us to the performing to the some of the computation or array uh, dealing with the array and then managing the data set. And then the other one is the pandas. Yeah, pandas is the another high level data structure processing and manipulation system. Like, uh, like, uh, uh I would say about the tidal, uh, in R, it, it is, looks, it is quite, quite similar to the, maybe I would say about the tidy verse. Is that, I'm not sure it is correct or not, but <laughs> maybe pandas has a kind of, a uh, kind of uh, adopting the, some of the data frame kind of a structure, uh, to to handling the handling the data set. So, so it is it looks it allows us to the manipulating and processing the those kind of a data frame, like a uh, data structure, and uh, like a tabular uh, tabular data, uh, like a tidy verse in R, and then uh using the pandas we can actually manipulating and processing and clean up the data set for our analysis and then sci-fi is a kind of a uh packages addressing the number of a foundation problem like uh, some of the computational calculations like a uh, scientific calculations and then and then skit skit learning is a kind of a machine learning kind of a toolkit that allows us to the classification or regression, clustering, and pre-processing kind of a problem. And also step model package is another way to using the conducting the statistical analysis for uh, uh packages in Python, like a like a LM function, like a regression model, ANOVA, time series analysis, etc. And and also Visualization of the statistical modeling result it says, but the thing is in the Python, we also know about the, what is called the Seaborn, 
when it comes to data visualization, we uh, there is also a package called the Seaborn packages, right? That one actually allows us to the kind of, uh, it looks like uh, equal to the like a ggplot2 <laughs> in R. And then Seaborn allows us to the, get the more highly visualized kind of uh, data visualization functions. And also, also I would say matplot, matplotlib, right? This one is also another another visualization package, uh, Python packages, to to allow us to the highly formatted and visual, uh, uh, quality uh, visualization result, right? And then there is also other packages about the some of the uh, like a machine learning or deep learning projects. You can also use the TensorFlow and PyTorch about the machine learning or artificial intelligence work or and also deep learning or some of the computer visioning kind of techniques when we had to use the, those things. There's also a package called the TensorFlow and PyTorch. So uh, those kind of packages you can uh, we can use. And then maybe do you have any other Python packages that you suggest for the data analysis? Do you have any good Python packages you know about for the data analysis? Anything? I think there's a um, visualization uh, package called Plot9 that kind of uses this uh, grammar of graphics like ggplot does. So. Uh, what is the spelling? Like a plot? It's a P -L -O -T -N -I -N -E. P -L -O -T L N I N E. Yep, N I N E. Yep. Okay, so I will say plot nine. Right? Is that That's correct? right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then so this one is a look, this one is act, act like a GG plot. Yes. It's like basically uh, kind of trying to put exactly ggplot into Python. Uh, ah, okay. Okay, so maybe anything else? Okay, so good to know, like a plot nine, maybe I have to check it out because uh, and also, okay, next one is the installation and setup. So, so I think that uh, everyone, I think that in, uh, unlike R, maybe everyone has uh, their own way to the install the Python and then uh, using the every, uh, their own, maybe his and her own kind of a uh, uh, Python ID editor, like a script editor. So for me, I personally use the Anaconda for here, like like here, like uh, it, in here, authors actually suggesting about the Miniconda. Miniconda is a kind of a, just kind of a minimal version, uh, a light version of the Anaconda. So I just using the Anaconda for my Python packages, especially for the, uh, the what is called the uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook or Spider. I can use the, Usually, Jupyter Notebook is uh, my my one pick for when I try to do the uh, Python programming. But sometimes I also feel like using the Jupyter, uh, Jupyter, uh, not Jupyter, like a spider. Because uh, in the Anaconda, there is actually two different packages. One is called the uh, Jupyter Notebook. And the other one is... I think the spider, I think this is it. So these two are the kind of a, uh, kind of a Python script editor that we can use for the, for the Anaconda. And then the Miniconda also has the same kind of a system that allows us to the uh, coding the Python. And also Python also has its own ID editor, but that does not have uh, too much functions to, to run the code. So, we prefer to use the this maybe mostly Anaconda 
or Mini Conda for the Windows or maybe Linux or maybe in Mac. Or maybe I also saw the someone who can use the uh, Visual Studio Code. Because uh, when you use the Visual Studio Code, you can also, there is also extension, Visual Studio Code extension, like an editing program that allows us to the, learn the Python code in the Visual Studio Code. And then we can also using the that one for the Python programming. And also there is another, another code is the Py, I think the PyCharm, right? Yeah. This one is uh, actually kind of a more like a my more like a freeware kind of kind of software. There is also a freeware version of the PyCharm, but but in order to use the full function of the, this editor, you have to buy this program, I guess. And then the other one that I also know about is the Atom. It is also open source uh, script editor developed by the MIT. Now I think it, this one is actually deprecated, no, no, no longer into the update version of the in service. But still, there is a, still a lot of a group of users who can use the pipe uh, atom, and then some of the Eclipse, and, and what else? Uh, I think that there is also other things that we can use for the Python editors. So. Maybe, maybe do you have any other other editor you also use or uh, heard of? Or what kind of a editor you usually use for the Python programming? I personally use the Anaconda, like especially for the Jupyter Notebook, cause I really love about the function of the book, uh, like a book, book uh, like a markdown kind of uh, approaches with uh, some detailed explanation of the each code block, but I kind of wondering what kind of a code, uh, code uh, Python editor you usually use. Anyone? At, at work, I use Databricks, which is like a uh -huh. notebook as well. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Like uh, what you say? Like uh, it's a uh, Databricks. It's like a it's like a notebook where you can have Python mm -hmm. chunks or R chunks or SQL chunks or Markdown chunks. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, PyDev. This one, right? No, it's something else. But that oh. it's like a um oh. like a paid service that my oh. work pays for. So, ah, oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. And in here, in also about the sublime text, or maybe some of the other one is about the yeah PyCharm yeah etc. So yeah, it's up to you. And then uh, there is a actually when you when you uh, go to the YouTube and then when you Google the, this kind of a program, there is a lot of a uh, uh, tutorial that. Uh, guide, that help you about the, how you can install the Python and then how to install the, these kind of editors, ID edit environment uh, for the Python programming. So maybe whenever you have a issue about the installing the R, just feel free to check out those kind of uh, tutorial and then uh, install the Python correctly. Cause I, when I, as far as I know, my, I think that most latest version of the Python is uh, right now is the 3.12.0, right? So, Maybe you can feel free to downloading the this uh this version if you don't have if you haven't installed the Python yet. But even if you can have a maybe ten uh three point eleven point zero or three point ten point zero, which is uh, used in the textbook, it doesn't matter because uh, most of the Python language and grammar is the exactly the same, regardless of the version. But if you can install the maybe 2.7.2 or 2.9.2, in this case, these are the kind of a different, right? It's not the same, right? There is a, some of the conflicts between the Python 2 and Python 3. In, in my case, sometimes I sometimes use the Python 2 languages 
because I'm a kind of a special data analyst. So in that case, when I use the ArcGIS uh, desktop version, there is a actually Python package called ArcPy, which is the which run into the in the Python two environment, and also ArcGIS desktop actually automatically install the Python two to to learn the some of the GIS kind of uh, data manipulation or data analysis. So maybe maybe if you have to use the uh, ArcGIS desktop for the special data analysis, you might use about the pack, Python package called the ArcPy. And then this ArcPy can be run into the Python 2 environment, which is uh, install, automatically install that version when you install the ArcGIS desktop. But recently, actually, there is another version called uh, like uh, recently, as we actually developed ArcGIS Pro. In this case, we actually use the uh, special data analysis and then the special data uh, processing by using the Python 3 in this case. So, so maybe if you are familiar with the ArcGIS, maybe you will thinking about the Python 2 for the ArcG ArcGIS desktop and then a Python 3 package uh, programming for the ArcGIS Pro when you try to processing the your spatial data database, which is I frequently use those data set for my research. So that's the kind of a little bit issues in my area, but mostly in the computer science or some of the data analysts, they, they now use the Python 3, not the Python 2. So Python 3 is almost a deprecate, uh, deprecated uh, I think right now, I think that there is some cases we still use the Python too, but anyway, so I think that this is it. So these are all of the, the other things is a kind of a, just kind of a code example about the, how we can import uh, the packages like a NumPy is a usually, excuse me, usually called a MP. So, Right. Instead of the using the NumPy as a kind of a package name, we usually use the MP like as a, a, a like a simple term, and then the pandas use the PD, and then uh, using this uh, abbreviation, and then we can actually call the functions, right? Because uh, most of the Python languages actually call the functions, uh, differentiated by the com uh by the uh, period like uh, in the first here is the actually package name right comes comes first and then a comma and then you can another uh, comma like a period and then uh, here is the kind of a set of the function name functions you can you can call so this is the what is called the object uh, object oriented programming languages. This is the this is the what is the most unique different from the when we use R. When we use R, we just call the functions, right? But before that, we actually import the, some of the packages by using the function called library, right? And then we can just call the function name in here, right? As it is, but in the Python, we actually um, call the package name first and then call the function to the next, like this case. And then we also use the import function for the, uh, for the to import the dev packages. And then uh, we can also assign that that package name is the, the other name, like a MP or PD in this case. And then uh, I think that this is it. And you know, uh, also, also for the for the NumPy and Pandas is not the basic 
packages automatically installed in Python. So we have to install the, these packages uh, manually. So in that case, maybe if you can use the Anaconda, maybe you can say about the Conda install and package name. I think this is the, there is a space in between these things. Or maybe if you can use the Python by itself, you can actually also do the, what is called the PIP. And then I think the PIP install the package name. That's the, what I think, or maybe I'm not the install, maybe PIP packages. Cause you know, I'm a kind of a very newbie and then I just, slowly getting to know, uh, slowly learning about the Python listening and then I'm not familiar with the Python languages. So if you have any, if I have any, make any mistakes, just feel free to let me know so that I can correct it. Okay. Cause, cause that's the kind of things. And then by using these things, you can actually uh, install the, these kind of uh, NumPy and Pandas packages. So that's the kind of things like a conda install package name for the anaconda command command window. Command window. Okay. I think that that's it. And, and also let me, uh, open to the, uh, our study club, uh, Uh, guide like uh, hold on. Uh, okay. um, Everyone can see the this screenshot. Okay. Can you see this screenshot? Yeah, I can, I can see. Okay. So this is the kind of a just kind of a basic book, uh, book club meeting. And then uh, we actually, as you agreed, we going to meet together to study this textbook every Saturday at 4 PM, like a central, uh, central time. And then, uh, we actually need a a volunteer to present the chapter from this book. Okay. So, and then pre presentation consists of the just kind of a review of a period or discussion. And then, uh, you don't have to summarize everything. You just uh, do your own presentation, prepare your own presentation slide. And then you just uh, feel free to presenting it. Or maybe if you are, if you do not feel comfortable to uh, 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 to prepare the presentations by using the markdown or maybe quarter in this case, cause which is the, that is actually one of the, my issues that I have right now, cause I'm not familiar with uh, this kind of a quarter, uh, kind of, a uh, uh, documentation languages. So maybe if you don't have, if you are not comfortable with uh, using those kind of things, you just uh, feel free to share the maybe, maybe textbook screenshot and then uh, you can just explain just as I did. Okay. That also going to be fine because the one of the main goal for us is to learn the this, uh, this textbook, not the kind of uh, preparing. We do not have to feel overwhelmed by the preparing for the presentation slide, etc. Just the learning and studying it is the, our most ultimate goal to this chapter. But I, I want you to maybe just kind of, uh, practice the sum of the Python code before you join the meeting. Like, uh, there is a, in the textbook, there is a lot of, uh, Python example and then a lot of Python code. And then, uh, I strongly recommend you to personally practice those kind of uh, Python code 
in person. And then uh, maybe if you have any issues or any questions, just, just feel free to ask those issues or questions in the meeting. That might be the good way to study our textbook. And then uh, also maybe as you can see here in our book, our book club channel, you can actually click the volunteer to present up here. And then you can feel free to uh feel free to sign up the, your name in here. Okay. So we have a uh, 13 different book chapter, which is gonna be about the three months, gonna be take, it gonna be take about the learn the this textbook. So basically we're gonna try to cover one chapter per week. But if that chapter is uh, too long or too many things to cover, maybe we can divide in that chapter into the two weeks and then we can do that, that chapter, cover that chapter uh, with the two weeks, okay? That's another thing I would, I had to say. And then the other thing is when it comes to the G GitHub, you will check on the, this repo website. And then there is a GitHub in here, website for the our book club. And then uh, here is a, a, a little bit detailed information about the, how, how you can present and then prepare your presentation. Because uh, this repository actually made with the Corto. I, I so think you might be sharing the wrong screen maybe because I'm just seeing oh. it's like the word Zoom. Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, now, can you see this? Yeah, but it's like scrolled over, kind of. Uh, kind of so. Yeah. But now, I uh, if you yeah. if you go over to the left a little more, even I think that would be good. Ah. Uh, hold on. Yeah, that now I'm seeing the good GitHub better. I think. Uh huh. Okay. 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 Gotcha. So now can you see the GitHub? Yes, looks great. Okay, so these are the, our GitHub uh, repository. And then uh, uh, I think that the previous cohort actually made uh, their, no uh, their note by using the quarter. And then uh, they actually uh, uh, explain about the, how to prepare the, your presentation by using this repository things and then uh, 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 that is the kind of, uh, you can just feel free to check it out. And then this is, uh, I actually try to learn the, these kind of things and then I'm uh, preparing for that, but I still kind of a learning curve about the, how I can use these things. So yeah, I just, yeah. So if you are can, yeah, it's up to you. Like uh, if you can prepare to the this one by using the uh, for the git repository you can feel free to do that or maybe you can do the just kind of showing the screenshot with the r and and the uh other uh uh and and other uh uh screenshot about the textbook and then we can you can just feel free to explain about the about the things um, for the for the each chapter, okay. And then, uh, and then I just want you to sign up to the this, uh, this press it like a volunteer to the present, and then uh, also check out the book website in the repo, and then uh, share a slide, and then uh, maybe those things etc. So. I think that that's it. And then, uh, do you have any questions or anything so far? Where's the volunteer place? Like I, I'm, oh, seeing, volunteer, I'm seeing this one. Yeah. yeah. So when you are looking at the this volunteer to pre, uh, can you see the my Slack screenshot, right? Yeah, I can see your Slack. Yeah. So at, up to the top, there is a cut. There is a call the volunteer to present in here, like a lead. Red icon in front. Can you see this one? Um. <laughs> yeah, you can go up, up to the that channel, like uh, like uh, okay. go up to the that channel. Yeah, you can see the this one. 
or maybe I can I can share the that that link in the chatting. Yeah. That sounds great. Thanks. Yeah. And then when you click the that one, okay. Uh you can see the this screenshot, okay? About the sign up sheet. So each chapter should should have a presenter to cover that one. Okay. So today I actually got the preface and then the preliminary. And then uh, we need a volunteer for the chapter two for the next week. If not, maybe I can cover that one. But yeah, you just feel free to sign up the, your name in here. Okay. And then based on the this schedule, we're going to try to presenting and then uh, studying the chapter every week. And then the during the Christmas season and then end of year season, we don't have any meeting during the during the, those two weeks. So we don't have no meeting uh, after two weeks. And then we keep going on, etc. That's the how this book club works. Okay. Do you have any questions? Any other questions? Okay, maybe I think that maybe I can type the, my name here for the next week for the chapter two. <laughs> yeah, because uh, no nobody wants to do that. <laughs> and then yeah, you uh you just uh, take your time and then and then feel free to fill out the, your name uh, for the chapter you are interested to the leading. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. And then any other questions so far? Anything? Thanks for getting us started. I really appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. Cause uh, this one is actually my third, uh, third book club that I that I personally facilitated. So I hope that maybe there might be the more people coming in, and then about four people will be okay because we still have a uh, people in here, and then yeah, we just uh, uh let's meet together meet together uh on Zoom, every every week, and then uh. I hope that you will enjoy this book club and then uh, we can learn a lot from each other and also from the textbook there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the good uh, introduction. Yeah. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave the your message into the Slack. I will check on that also. So... Or maybe if you have any problem with uh, not joining the meeting, maybe sometimes maybe it also happen. So depending on the depending on the situations, maybe we so sometimes postpone our meeting depending on the like uh, if we don't have, uh, if a lot of people cannot join the meeting for that week, maybe I can make a decision to the maybe no meeting or maybe we can postpone the meeting next week because. Uh, Nobody know nobody knows what's what's gonna be happening in the future. Life always have uh, unexpected things happen. So if that's the case, just uh, feel free to let me know in Slack, and then uh, we can think about the uh, arranging the our schedule, depending on the availability of the our time. Okay, so no more no worries, and then uh, no overwhelmed by the this kind of a learning kind of opportunity. So just a feel free to learning start and then uh, let's enjoy to the this book club then. Okay, so thank you very much and then I will see you all next week. Bye, thanks.